Hi everybody, welcome back to Creek Kids. Today we are in the book of Ruth and we are looking at the story of Ruth and Boaz and different kinds of love. So we're gonna head in now and see how large we goes. There we go. All right. Well, you are, you are all going to stay in your crews for this first song, but we're still going to get you moving, okay? Because we're going to do a song called I'm Going to Walk, but we don't want you walking all over the gym or anybody, into anybody's crews. If you can, if everybody's crews move together, then that'll work fine. Or you can just walk in place in the crews that you are in. All right, but I'm going to have you turning different directions, so pay attention to us up here and get all ready to listen. Okay, Miss Dory, here we go.
One, two, three. Dear God, we thank you so much uh, for, for who you are and that there is no one else like you, God. You are the one and only God, almighty, uh, and no one can love us like you, no one can take care of us like you, no one can provide for us like you do, uh, because you love us. You love us so much, God, and we are so thankful uh, that, you, that you do love us the way that you do. Lord, I pray that you'd be with Miss Elizabeth again this morning as she brings our large group lesson. I just pray that you would speak through her uh, and the, the words of the lesson this morning. Um, let them be your words uh, as, we, as we do speak from your word, God. Uh, we love you, praise you, and it's in the wonderful name of your son, Jesus, our Savior, that we pray. Amen. Okay, good morning. I'm so excited to get started this morning. Uh, how many of you have been, how many of you, this is your first day back with us? Raise your hand. Oh, good. We are so excited you're here. You know, we are growing every single week and getting more and more uh, familiar faces here, and we are just loving having you all back. And for those of you at home, we are loving that you are, are tuning in there as well, and everybody's getting to hear the Word of God. So we are jumping back in to where we were last week. Who knows what book of the Bible we were in? Who knows? Oh, I heard it. Say it real loud. We are in Judges. Why is the book of the Bible called Judges? It should be pretty easy. What was it? Who knows? What is it? Because there were tons of judges. Very good. Because the, the Israelites were living in a time of so many judges. Remember a couple weeks ago we were talking about the cycle that they were in. That they would be really unhappy. They would cry out to God. And God would send them a judge. That judge would die. That he would, the people would then turn away from God again. God would allow them to be taken over by a king. The, king the, the people would cry out to God again. Oh, things are so bad. Please send us another judge. So we are living in this time of judges. We've been talking about several of them, several other people that have, have, that have, that have stories in the book of Judges, that were living in a time of judges, and the actual judges themselves. So tell me who we talked about last week when we... We're, we're part of the story that made us say, that's ridiculous. Who were we talking about last week? Yes, ma'am. Samson. Samson. Very good. Remember, Samson had long hair. What was the big thing about Samson? What was the one rule that he had to follow? Yes, ma'am. That he should not cut his hair. What happened to Samson if he cut his hair? He would lose his strength. Samson was not just a little bit strong. Samson was crazy superhero strong. And God told Samson that he must not cut his hair. And what happened? Somebody came along. Who was it? What was her name? Yell it out. Delilah. Delilah. And Delilah and these other people, they kind of conspired against him. And when he was sleeping, they cut his hair and he lost all of his strength. What happened when his hair grew back? What did he do? Yes, ma'am. He got strong again, and how did he use that strength? Oh, but how? Exactly. He pushed down the walls, the pillars of the temple, and it came crashing down. He was used in God's plan. Who did we talk about the week before in the story that made us say, that's crazy? Gideon, very good. What happened with Gideon? Gideon was in charge of an army, a huge, massive army. It was a pretty little army, and he was up against a huge, massive army. And remember, God told Gideon to reduce his army down and reduce it down, get it smaller and smaller and smaller until he just had a few people, and they didn't even have weapons going into this battle. Gideon did not have confidence in himself, but he had confidence in who? God. And whose battle was it? Was it Gideon's? No. That battle belonged to God. And because Gideon did what God wanted him to, his tiny little army with no weapons won the battle. So we are seeing the answer to our big picture question every week. And I'm going to ask the story to put the, the question and the answer up on the screen. So we've looked at this a couple of weeks. How, sorry, it's a little bit further down there. 
I threw her for a loop this morning. There it is. How does God accomplish his plan? Who remembers? What does he use? Oh, say it real loud. By using people. By using people. Great, big, strong people? Like superhero strength only people? No. No. Yes, he used Samson in that way with great superhero strength. But Gideon didn't have that. Gideon didn't have anything special. Remember, Gideon didn't even have confidence in himself. But God uses people for his glory and for our good. So today's story that we're going to jump into today is about some people that are not judges but lived in the time of judges, and they were also used by God, just simple people that were used by God for his glory and for, well, their good. But before we jump into that, I, of course, have something that you're going to have to yell out today. So when this is... I know, some of you are gonna go, ugh, but just wait. Today's story, a little bit of a love story. Yeah, I know, I do, I get some groans. Don't worry, that'll be important to you later. But there are different kinds of love. It's not just, there's not just a romantic love between a boyfriend and girlfriend, a husband and wife. There's also love between family members, between you and your parents, your grandparents, your siblings, there is love between you and your friends. There are all different kinds of love, and the most important one is the love between you and who? God. All different kinds of love. So even though you might hear, ew, I don't want to talk about a love story, there's all different kinds of love stories. And you are loved by people here on earth, and you are loved by a great big God. So we're going to talk about all kinds of love in this story today. But what I need you to do is when I go, aww, I need you to respond and say, that's lovely. Okay? So I'm going to turn my head back. Aww. And I want you to say what? That's lovely. That's lovely. Very, very good. Okay, well, I'm going to introduce you to someone. Some of you know who this is. Uh, some of you know who this is but don't know what he means to me. That guy over there, I'm going to ask to come up here. Who is that? What's his name? Mr. Josh. Mr. Josh. Did you know that Mr. Josh and I are married? I know, shocking to some of you. Yeah, so Mr. Josh is my husband. Mr. Josh and I have been together for 16, 16 17 years, something like that. We haven't married that long, but we have been together for a very, very long time. We met in college and we got to know each other for a very long time and then got married and now we have a family. So we have gotten to know each other over a long amount of time. Now, would it be safe to say with my husband who I've been with for so long and been married to for over five years now, it would it be safe for you to say that I probably love him? I do, just a little bit, yeah, it's okay. I do, I love my husband. I'm very, very grateful for my husband. And I have had to learn to trust my husband and know that he will be there for me when I need him. So we're going to do a little demonstration today that is going to scare me a lot, but it's going to make me trust my husband. If I were to turn around backwards and fall off this stage, do you think Mr. Josh would be able to catch me? Do you think I should trust him to catch me? Mr. Matt says no. I am worried about you and your wife. No, I'm kidding. I love Meredith too. We have wonderful leaders here, but I am a little worried for myself. I'm not gonna lie. This tile is, I mean, this floor is better than the tile floor out there, but still gonna be a hard fall if he doesn't catch me. So we're gonna do a little, little trust experiment here. I'm gonna turn around backwards and I'm gonna trust, hope, and pray that Mr. Josh will catch me when I fall. Okay, you guys ready? You're gonna help me count down. Okay, I'm gonna count down from three. Have you practiced this? Okay. <laughs> Are you worried we're gonna break the mic if something goes bad? All right, here we go. Okay, well, I have learned to trust my husband, and luckily he is there for me when 
and I need him. And I love him so, so much. Now, I'm going to tell you one quick story um, about a time where I was so grateful that he was there and was what I needed at the time. So, does anybody know what a marathon is? You run a marathon. Does anybody know what that is? Have you ever heard that word? Okay, a marathon is a really, really long distance. It's 26.2 miles. And I decided a few years ago that I was going to run a marathon. I, there was just something I was going to do. So I trained for it all by myself with the encouragement of Josh and my parents and my family and some friends and things like that. Well, guess where I decided to run this marathon? Disney World. What? Yeah. So I decided I, if I'm going to run a marathon, I'm going to do it right. I'm going to run all around Disney World in Florida. So they have this big marathon every year where you can actually join in with like 20,000 other people and run 26 miles, 26.2 miles around Disney World and through the parks. Super cool, right? Should be no problem except for the, the 26 miles. Look, thing. I'm surrounded by people all over, 20,000 people. I'm surrounded by people the whole time. And I start out and I, I get there in the morning. We have to get up at 3.30 in the morning. 3.30 in the morning to get on the bus to go to the starting line to start at like 5 or 6 o'clock in the morning. And it was really super cold. And I had, luckily, the support of my parents and Josh there with me. So my mom took this picture, this first picture that I'm going to show you guys. And I love it because it's Josh giving me a hug right before I head to the starting line. It's cold and nervous. And he is giving me this, you know, hey, good luck, you got this kind of hug, okay? So I get to the starting line, I start running, and I'm like, oh, this is fun, this is nice, look at all the stuff I'm seeing. I, I run through the Magic Kingdom, straight to the castle, around through the castle. I, I'm running all around, I get to about 19, mile 19. I mean, I'm starting to get tired, of course, but I, I think I got this, this is cool scenery, they've got characters and music. Get to about mile 19, mile 20, and I'm like, I am out. Forget this. I have six miles to go. I, I can't do it. I'm looking around. I feel so alone. But I looked around and thought, I have 20,000 people around me. How do I feel so alone? Have you ever felt lonely when you're in a crowd? Have you ever felt lonely even though there are people around you? Yeah, sometimes it happens that you may look around and go, There's, my friends aren't here. I mean, I, I see a lot of people, but I don't know them. They're not special to me, and I, I just need a friend. I just need somebody there to help me. I can't do this by myself. And that's how I started to feel. Luckily, I had my phone on me, and I got my phone out, and I, I was walking. Oh, I was tired, and I was really ready to give up. I thought, there's a cart back there that will take me straight to the finish line. I, I can be done with this now. But I got out my phone, and I texted my dad. I love my dad. My dad and I are super close. And I said, Dad, I don't think I can do it. And he texted back some verses that were super important to me, you know, running with endurance and, and that in all, in all, everything that I do, God is there with me. Um, that all things are possible through, through God who gives me strength. He gave me all these wonderful verses. I thought, whew, I can do it. Okay. So that was from my dad. And then I texted my husband and I texted him like, hey, I don't, I don't know that I can do this. And he was texting back, you've got this. I believe in you. I know you can. Okay, that gives me a little bit more strength. And then I texted Ms. Conda, if you know Ms. Conda, who is our nursery, nursery um, coordinator, who I, I have been friends with for almost 20 years. And I texted her, I'm like, Conda, and she wasn't even there, y'all. It was a Sunday morning, she was here at church. Conda, I don't think I can do this. And she texted back, she said, I am cheering you on from afar. You have got this. So I had my, my parents and my husband and a very close friend of mine all cheering for me, giving me strength. And it just gave me that extra boost to keep going. And y'all, I managed to finish the marathon. But I could not have done that. I am telling you, could not have done that without the help of others. Three different people, three different kinds of love that I was shown that day that helped me as I needed things. It just gave me exactly what I needed. So I've got a couple other pictures here just so you guys can see. 
this was me. I don't think you can see that one well, but I'm running up to the fence, and Josh is like, yes, you did it. He's right there at the fence waiting for me, and then we can skip to the next one. Um, you're able to see that see the fence. Let's go one more because you can see my family there was there and so super supportive. And then Miss Kondo was texting me, "You did it! You did it! I'm so excited for you!" And I had everything I needed with all those people surrounding me, even though they were not right there next to me where I could see them. I could feel the love that they had, the different kinds of love that they were showing me, and that I knew they were there for me. No matter what, no matter where I went, no matter what I did, they were going to be there. They were everything I needed. So just like Josh, uh, you know, if I had, if I had turned around now and I count three, two, one, and fall backwards, what's going to happen? Well, if he ran, then he'd catch me. But if he wasn't there, what would happen? I would fall. I would hurt myself. I would fall from a long way, hit my head on the floor, and get hurt. I needed that other person. I needed the help of somebody else to be able to show you my demonstration today. Without that person, I would really be in trouble. Everybody say, oh. There it is, that's lovely. All right, I'll tell you one more thing. So Josh and I have been married for a long time. We have um, two little boys. I'll show you our little boys here. We have two little boys. Those are my little boys. They go, aww. Oh, yes. Those boys depend on us. And I have a different kind of love even for my own kids than I do Mr. Josh, my sisters, my parents, God, Miss Conda, all those people. They're all different kinds of love. So we're going to talk a lot about love this morning. One more time. Oh, That's lovely. Okay, so we are going to talk about love between a couple of people. We are looking at a woman named Ruth. Everybody say Ruth. Did you know there are only two books of the Bible that the name is a woman's name? One is Ruth. Does anybody know the other? Oh, good job, guys. Esther is the second. So Ruth and Esther are the only two books of the Bible that are a woman's name. There are lots of other ones there that are men's names and lots of other things. That are, that are descriptive of whatever is in that book, um, like Judges, the time of Judges. So today we are talking about Ruth and a couple of people in her life. Number one, Naomi. Everybody say Naomi. Very good. And the second, Boaz. Everybody say Boaz. Boaz. So we are talking about Ruth and her connection, her relationship with number one, who? No, not that. I'm pointing up, but number one, Naomi. Naomi, there it is. And number two, Boaz. Boaz is a fun name to listen to learn anyway. So, all right. I want you guys to watch our Bible story video today, and then we'll come back and talk a little bit about those relationships together and what they mean and the different kinds of love that you are going to see in these stories. Okay, so pay attention up here. Naomi lived in Bethlehem, in Judah, with her husband and their two sons. At that time, the people of Israel were ruled by judges like Gideon, Samson, and Deborah. There was a famine in the land, so it was difficult to find enough food to survive. Naomi and her husband decided to go to Moab. While they were in Moab, Naomi's husband died. Naomi's sons married women from Moab, Orpah and Ruth. They lived in Moab for 10 years, and then Naomi's sons died. Naomi, Orpah, and Ruth were all alone. The famine was over, so Naomi decided to go home. The women were very sad to leave each other. Orpah returned home, but Ruth clung to Naomi. Wherever you go, I will go and wherever you live, I will live. Your people will be my people, and your God will be my God. So Naomi and Ruth returned to Bethlehem together. Naomi gave Ruth permission to go into the fields and gather fallen grain. She happened to go to the field of Boaz, a good man from the family of Naomi's late husband. Boaz saw Ruth in his field 
he had heard how kind Ruth was to Naomi. So Boaz told Ruth to stay in his field where she would be safe. Boaz made sure Ruth had enough food. Ruth gathered plenty of grain in the field. She returned to Naomi and told her about Boaz. Boaz is one of our family redeemers, Naomi replied. A family redeemer was someone who would help his close relatives if they were in trouble. Naomi knew Boaz would take care of Ruth, so she encouraged Ruth to stay in his fields. Naomi wanted to make sure Ruth had a husband to take care of her, so she gave Ruth special instructions. Ruth put on her best clothes and laid down near Boaz's feet. In this way, Ruth showed Boaz that she hoped he would marry her. Boaz was surprised to find Ruth at his feet. You are a family redeemer, Ruth said. Boaz promised to redeem Ruth, which meant he would buy back the land that Naomi sold after her husband died, and he would marry Ruth. He gave Ruth grain and sent her home. Boaz bought back the land that had belonged to Naomi's family, and he married Ruth. Ruth and Boaz had a son named Obed. Naomi took care of Obed. When Obed grew up, he was the father of Jesse, who was the father of King David. Boaz was a family redeemer. That means he would help his close relatives who were in trouble. Boaz cared for Ruth and Naomi because their husbands had died. In a similar way, Jesus is our redeemer. We need help because we sin. Jesus bought our salvation for us by taking our punishment when he died on the cross. Okay, so how well did you guys listen to the story? Really well? Okay, all right, those in the back said that they listened really well, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna test you guys. Who was Naomi? How was she related to Ruth? Who knows? Way in the back, say it super loud. Hang on, I'm sorry. Last, last row back there in the blonde hair. Yeah, so Naomi was Ruth's mother-in-law, okay? So um, I have a mother-in-law because that's Josh's mother, okay? So I'm married to Josh. His mother is my mother-in-law. So for Ruth, Naomi was her mother-in-law, her husband's mother. Now, what happened to them? What happened to Naomi's husband, Ruth's husband? What happened? Yes, sir. So I just wanted to tell you that I was born in Brazil. Okay, you know what? Save your story and you can come and tell me later, okay? I would love to hear it. Yes, Mia. That's right. So, Naomi's husband died. She was with her two, her two daughters-in-law. Do you know what the other one's name was? Did you catch it? A little bit strange, starts with an O. No, Ruth was one, but who was the other daughter-in-law? Oh, I heard it back there. Orpa. Everybody say Orpa. Okay, strange name. But Orpa was her other daughter-in-law. So then she was with Orpa and Ruth, but then what happened? So she's with her sons and her daughters-in-law, but what happened to her sons? They all died, they both died. So here, here are three women who are by themselves now because their husbands have died. Now in that time, the, uh, that time was very, very different than our time now. At that time, women really needed the, the strength, the help of their husbands or people to take care of them. So when their husbands died, they became widows and they needed someone to take care of them. They wouldn't be working for themselves. They, they would need someone to help them with land, with food, to take care of the family. They could stick together, and, but they always, you'll see over and over and over in the Old Testament especially, that people would help the widows. That's when we talk about the widows. Those are the people whose husbands had died. They needed that help of, of a man, just the way that it was in that time. So, so Naomi, when her sons died, what did she tell her daughters-in-law? Does anybody catch that? What they could go do? Yes. Oh, it's 
so hard to hear, I'm sorry. Say real loud. Yeah, so they were able, if they wanted to, to go home to where they were from. So Orpa decided to do what? Stay with, yeah, stay, go, with, go home, stay with her people. But what did Ruth say? Ruth had a chance to be with, with her people, her, her family from before she married Ruth's, or Naomi's son. What did Ruth say? She said something really significant. She said, where are you? So what she said was, where you go, I will go, and your, your God will be my God. What she was telling Naomi, Naomi is, I love you, I am going to stick with you. And so she was showing a love to Naomi, her mother-in-law, but she was also showing a love to God because she was going to stick with 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 Naomi and stick with God. Where you go, I will go. Where you um, where your God will be my God. Okay, so then they go and they meet who? Naomi takes her and they, they go and they meet who? They work in whose field? Yes, sir. Boaz. Everybody say Boaz. Boaz. So now she meets Boaz. Everybody, I'm going to say, oh, that's lovely. She meets Boaz. Boaz is what they called a family redeemer. So when I just said that there were people that would take care of the, the widows at that time, Boaz was one that would take care of Ruth by marrying her and therefore taking care of her and Naomi. So when the story says that Ruth went and laid at the feet of Boaz, that was her showing Boaz, hey, I am here and I, I, I'm coming to you so that you can redeem me. What did Boaz do? What did he do? He married her. Yeah. To take care of both her, Ruth, and her mother-in-law, Naomi. Now, God blessed that in so much of it. Well, first of all, oh, they got married. That's lovely. There we go. So we see, though, a picture of what God did for each one of us. So just like Ruth needed a redeemer, needed someone to care for her, and God provided Boaz... Who has God provided for us to be a redeemer for us? Who would that have been? Jesus. Yeah, did you catch that at the end of the story? Yeah, Jesus is a redeemer for us. He loves us and he cares for us. So we see all these different kinds of love. The love between Ruth and Naomi, these two family members. We see the love between Ruth and Boaz, this husband and wife. And we see overall the love of God for Ruth, Boaz, and Naomi, but also the love of God to us. Because remember, God uses people for whose glory? His glory. And the story of Ruth and Boaz reflect what God is going to do someday. I mean, he has done it, but in the story where we're looking at in history, look, Jesus hasn't come yet, so he's showing them, hey, this is a picture of what I'm going to do someday. I'm going to send someone to redeem all of you. We have the benefit of seeing the story later where we know Jesus has come, but did you catch the last part at the end where they were talking about Ruth and Boaz's kids and grandkids? Did anybody listen to that? Who was Ruth and Boaz's great grandson? Oh, say it loud. King David. King David. Remember when I said the Bible is a history book and everything is connected? What an amazing story. Not only are these, these were just two people that they're, you know, Naomi and Ruth, their, their husbands died. They had to go work in the field. They had to go back to their families. They had to be taken care of by somebody else. It could have just been, nah, whatever kind of story. But God used these people in an incredible way and then continued through their line to provide to them King David. Do you know who else comes through that line? What do you think? What? Jesus. So everything in the Bible is connected. It all points back to Jesus. 
Now, I'm not saying that every line of people that we look at goes directly back to Jesus, but everything in the Bible points to Jesus. Everything shows what, that God has a plan and that he uses people for his glory and for our good and continues to do so because Jesus is going to come back someday. And he is using us now to continue to point people to him, to show love, aww, to our family members, to our friends, to our parents, eventually to our husbands and wives, to our kids, but most of all, our love to who? God. God. Very good. Okay, so I'm going to do our verse real quick, and then we're going to do a little bit of a movement break. So everybody, stand up. We're going to put that verse on the screen. Our verse is Isaiah 33, 22, okay? So this is our third week doing it. Let's see if you guys can say it with me. Ready? The Lord is our judge. The Lord is our lawgiver. The Lord is our king. It is he who saves us. Isaiah 33, 22. Very good. You guys will practice that in your small groups. Okay, I'm going to bid farewell to our online audience. Okay, so we're going to do a movement break. I'm going to call five, four, three, two, one. We're going to do five different things. The first one we're going to do five times, the second one four times, the third one three, on and on. Okay, so I need five different kinds of movement that you can do in your crew. Somebody give me an example. What's the kind of movement you can do? Okay, I'll give you the first one. How about jumping jacks? Because not everybody can do the splits. And I definitely can't do five of them. Okay, so we'll start with five jumping jacks, okay? So now that you've got one thing, hang on, don't do it yet. What is another movement that we can do? What's another kind of movement, a way you can move? Yes, sir, in the back, show me. Okay, jumping up with your knees up. Okay, that'll be, we'll do four of those. So jumping jacks first, jumping with your knees up, number four. Okay, give me one, uh, give me another one. Who else can show me something? Yes, ma'am, show me, uh-huh. Oh, you're going to have to show me. Don't tell me. Oh, push-ups. I'm glad we only have three of those. Okay, push-ups will be number three. What's our next one? Give me a movement. Somebody give me a movement. First graders, anybody have some kind of way we can move? Yeah, show me. No? Nope. Okay, who knows? i got to get an example. Yes. What's another way we can move? Then now touch your toes. I love it. I can't get that far, but we'll do it. Okay, we'll do two stretches and the last. What's your movement? Oh, good stretches. Okay, perfect. All right, so we'll start out with five jumping jacks. Ready? Go. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, now we have to do four, like, high jump knees. Okay, ready?
Amen. Okay, you guys go ahead and turn in your crews and start your small group lesson. Oh, that's lovely. Did you learn different things about different kinds of love? The love between God and you is most important. But we also have the love between our family members and our friends. I hope you know that there are all kinds of people around you who love you, including us here at Creek Kids. We'll see you next week.